You know what? I think it's time. Let's cause a little bit of trouble. I'm going to be talking about some spoilers for Horizon Forbidden West. This video is going to fully explain the plot, the ending, and basically every major detail of the game itself. So if you have not finished the game, or if you care about spoilers, this is not the video for you. Now, if you want to hear my spoiler-free thoughts about the game itself, I have separately created a big spoiler-free review, which very much I love this game a lot. As of the filming of this video, I have now played about 45 hours of the game itself. I've finished the main story, I've done a lot of side quests, I've spent a lot of hours just running around blasting robotic dinosaurs. It's been a very good time, but for this video specifically, I want to talk about some of the problems I have with the writing. <sighs> now let's get into that. What's up gamers, Dreamcast guy here. Now if you could please like this video and subscribe if you haven't already, but now let's really start to try and rip into this. The major problem I have with Horizon Forbidden West's story is that it feels very unearned. In Horizon Zero Dawn, the first game was very much based on its big plot twist, which is the fact that this is not your typical post-apocalyptic story. All these characters, these humans that now exist in a tribal state, they're back to using spears, bows, and arrows to try and defend themselves and hunt for food. It existed in a world where humanity had failed. There was an apocalypse, there was a giant event that destroyed all of humanity, and now the people that exist are basically clones. They're a later generation of humans that have been raised up. Well, Horizon Forbidden West feels like they want to try and make something even more dramatic than that twist, which is basically aliens. Okay, so now technically they're not actually aliens. They're just humans that have been living in space for the last 1,000 years. These people are called the Zeniths. Now, these people completely suck in my opinion, because honestly, they're just so ridiculous. These are practically godlike beings. Now, I want to be clear about something. They're very explicit. The Zeniths are not the descendants of the original humans. They are the original humans. These are the people that were there for the apocalypse when the entire world was getting consumed, except when everybody else was getting killed off, they built a rocket ship and they fired themselves into deep space. They spent 350 years driving to a far off planet. Now, how did they survive? Apparently, they have the very best of medical science. They managed to make themselves literally immortal. They could just live forever and ever and ever. So they just sat there in their ship going for 350 years to a far off planet. They get there. It sucks. They end up creating a new monster, which we're going to talk about here in a second. They cause that apocalypse on the new planet and they drive 350 years back to Earth. That's the story. That's the actual story. But here's what kind of sucks about this is that having these proto humans, these super massively intelligent mega beasties, like I don't necessarily have a problem with that. It feels like they're trying to make some sort of weird message inside of this that doesn't really land. It feels like they're trying to say that these people in very explicit terms, they talk about the fact that these people are the rich and the powerful of the old human existence. It basically feels like they're trying to say that this is Jeff Bezos of Amazon and Elon Musk, basically the richest, wealthiest, most cult-like of billionaires that exist today are the people that are going to get their followers and just shoot off into the stars. And now that they're back, they want to just destroy everybody. They want to basically wipe out all of humanity and then just basically use Earth for resources. Now, like all of this just feels really weird. The Zeniths, I, I think in general, their writing is incredibly bad. But more than that, I just honestly, and this is kind of petty, I hate how they look. They have these stupid white space suits that make them hover around. They literally fly. Even while they're flying, they look bored and they're untouchable. Like for most of the game, you actually encounter a couple of them. When you try and fight these people, arrows bounce off, knives, spears, guns, nothing can even touch these people. Now that sort of makes sense. Obviously, if you've been existing for a thousand years, you probably got technologically more advanced than these primitive people that exist in the current version of Earth. My issue is just that it's really boring. Like having these huge space gods return to Earth and try and take over is incredible 
incredibly goofy, especially because, like, obviously, Aloy, the main character, she's a clone. She's a copy of this human who tried to save everybody before the apocalypse named Elizabeth. Well, these Zenists, these aliens, they have their own clone of Elizabeth as well that they call Beta. It's basically the secondary copy of Aloy. It's really weird that now we have two separate versions of Aloy, basically, and the younger one, like, they're both clearly voice acted by the same person, Ashley Birch. It feels like they're doing this to maybe just have multiple ways of having the same actress play different roles. There are seriously these multiple long conversations between Aloy and Beta that feel very strange because it's just the same character almost. Like their tone is so identical because they're literally, they say they're 99% the same DNA when they talk to each other. I don't know. It, it just feels really, really bizarre. But more than that, let's talk about how they're trying to set up basically a giant space demon thing for Horizon Zero Dawn 3. I, I, I'm sorry I keep touching my face, but I'm, I'm just kind of flabbergasted by the direction of this because the game is so fun, the world is so great, it's just this main plot that completely falls apart. So it turns out that while the Zeniths were in space, they were working on the technology to make themselves immortal. They wanted to try and finish everything they needed for their laser barriers and organs that don't fail after a hundred years. You know, that technology was advancing pretty well. But during the course of their trip, they came up with a backup plan where they essentially downloaded their brains into computers. And somehow they, they don't quite get into the details, but this experiment failed in some capacity. So all of these versions of themselves, these flash cloned memories, all their fears, their hopes, their dreams, all that kind of stuff gets put into one big gobbledygook AI and they're calling it Nemesis because apparently they put this thing on a laptop and just forgot about it. Now keep in mind, these Zeniths are pretty explicitly referred to as like hyper narcissist weirdo Neanderthal humans from the proto-age, you know? So their AI copies of their brain goes crazy in a way. It becomes just as narcissistic and crazy as the humans it's based on. So as soon as it manages to get free, breaking out of its terminal or whatever, it destroyed the planet they were on. So all the Zeniths packed up, they get back on their spaceship, and they drove those 350 years back to Earth. And somehow, it's not said super clearly, but now Nemesis is chasing them down. It wants to kill them for the punishment of boredom? Like, apparently, after they made it, it somehow got frustrated about being stuck in the computer, so it's just wants revenge. Which, in a way, it sort of gets, because Nemesis is now trying to fly back to Earth, but all the Zeniths are dead. Literally, in this game, we kill every single one of these futuristic people. Once we discover how to deactivate their shields, Aloy and her friends murder the heck out of all of them. They're all dead, despite the fact that they've been alive for over a thousand years, and despite the fact that they have this ancient cloud of pissed off angry vibes that's chasing them down, like, they're all gone. This is clearly setting up the next sequel because they pretty explicitly say that the next game is going to be about dealing with Nemesis because he's still coming to Earth to try and find the Zeniths. Which means that basically it sounds like he's probably going to use the machines. He's probably going to make a huge make a dinosaur that we're going to have to worry about. And this just feels so unearned. It's weird that we fought off all these aliens. Now we have a spaceship. At the end of this, they even have Aloy where she's talking to that guy Silence, and he's basically like, I'm going to go into space. Now I'm going to explore space. Do you want to come with me, Aloy? And she decides not to, but they have a spaceship now. So is the next game going to be fighting off Nemesis on the moon? Are there going to be moon dinosaurs? Are the is they just going to come here and fight this huge angry cloud? Like, this just feels so bonkers. Like, the game was always ridiculous. I mean, when you think about it, we're fighting robotic dinosaurs, so I wasn't expecting it to be realistic. But this is just, for me, it didn't work. But I'm curious what you guys think. Are you happy with this story? Is this good for you? Or does this just seem like a very strange mess? 
Tell me your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a giant thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. Oh, God. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.